Marcus. Okay, go for it, go for it. And welcome. And welcome. Welcome to Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Nick Strong alongside Akil Williams. It's the Lady Tigers of Texas Southern taking on the Devilettes of Mississippi Valley State University. We've got a good one tonight, Akil. Last time in Itabina, Mississippi, these Lady Tigers fell to the Devilettes of Mississippi Valley State. They fell by one point, Nick, and they need to bounce back. Not only lost the Valley, but they lost the last game Saturday to Arkansas Pomelo by double digits, 71 to 60. And this is a big game for TSU. Even though it is for Valley, they're under 500. It's a big game for the Lady Tigers tonight. Devilettes in the green jerseys, white trim. Tigers in the gray jerseys, maroon trim. Devilettes going from right to left on your computer screen. Two to zero. TSU has the lead here early on. We see Mississippi Valley running a little offense here. Going into the paint is Ashley Beals, the conference player of the week from last week. Akil, TSU, we've got some key players to talk about. Who is going to be the key player for TSU tonight? Well, I'm looking at Shamal, bro. She's taking place in front of our TV floor. That's not playing tonight. So I'm looking at Shamal, bro. Last game against Valley, she had 12 points. And she could be a big factor inside this paint for the Lady Tigers. Ken Erson, no. And here come the Devilettes of Mississippi Valley. Who do you like on this side of the basketball? I like Ashley Beals for Valley. Ashley Beals has been... Is one, of the, is one of the top six players in the SWAC. Not probably in the top five, you ask some people. Ashley Bill is one of the people that that's double figures that give you easily 20 points each and every night for the for the Devilettes. China Ewan coming away with the rebound, trying to go coast to coast. Gives it up, and Shamaya Brooks gives it off to Joyce Kenderson. The Lady Tigers coming off a big loss Saturday night to Arkansas Pine Bluff in double digits. This is definitely the game that they want to recap on against a team that they lost to early on in the season. Let's talk about some keys to victory here early on for the Tigers. Well, you got to give Joyce some help. She's averaging 20 points per game, and they have scores on this team, but they need to score on a consistent basis. You have China Ewan that can give you 10 to 12 points, the freshman. You have Caitlin Palmer that can give you points each and every night. But on a consistent basis, she needs help scoring the ball because she, she cannot keep carrying this load on offense for the Lady Tigers. You got to be aggressive. You got to get to the free throw line. Last game, you got to the free throw line 19 times, made 12 of them, went 63% against the Lady Golden Lions of Arkansas Pine Bluff. If you want to win tonight, you have to get to the free throw line and protect your house. Game back home for that event, home court advantage. You are at home, you suffered, you suffered a double digit loss to Pine Bluff, 71 to 60. Get back on track. It starts right now. It's not panic mode just yet, but it is alarming. Christy Parker to the free throw line, and she misses both. Usually a 57% free throw shooter from the year. Can't get her points to, and we've got an early whistle here. Must be a clock issue there. And they're going to add a couple of seconds to the clock. Tigers lead it early on, 5-0. China Ewan trying to get some things going on. Shamaya Brooks gets the start today. Artavia Ford not in the starting lineup tonight. And as a quick drive. Shamaya Brooks getting a start tonight. We last saw her. Her coming out party was against her former team a couple of weeks ago right here in the HMPE versus Prairie View A&M. What do you see Shamaya Brooks adding to the flavor tonight? Well, protecting the interior. She's a big body for the Lady Tigers. She's more aggressive, more stronger than Artavia Ford. Artavia Ford, more finesse player. Shamal Brooks is more aggressive. She can control that paint, and she can give you, ever since the Prairie View game, she can give you double digits. I think she got her confidence up. She found her weight in the system. She found the place. She found the role, and she can give a lot of help for McElrath and Joyce Kennison in the scoring department. Yeah, McElrath to the free throw line. Couldn't land it. She's a 54% free throw shoot on the year. Definitely got to have some production from her at the free throw line. 5-0 your score. Lady Tigers lead it. Just about seven minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Two-game swing for the Tigers. Pine Bluff Saturday night. Tonight, the Devilettes of Mississippi Valley. And Ashley Beals couldn't put it inside the basket. 
as she got around there pretty smooth. And that's the type of player you're going to see all night from Ashley Beals. She can really get inside. She can get inside. I've been seeing this for the last two years with Ashley Beals. She's always been carrying the load for this team. And I think right now, you can say this is their best year for Valley. Last year, they didn't really have the best season for them. They was way up. They was like the ninth to ten. They was the 10th seed last year in the tournament. Now, this year, you're fighting for maybe a six or seven spot in the tournament. And this might be Ashley Beals' best year for the Devil Lits. That's going to be immediate timeout for the Lady Tigers here early on. 6.44 left to go. Lady Tigers lead it over the Devil Lits of Mississippi Valley State University 7-0. to zero. We'll be right back. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball on the TSU Sports Network. Welcome back to Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Nick Strong alongside Akil Williams, a junior here at Texas Southern University. Marcus Smith on the sidelines. He'll be graduating soon as well. Also, sports editor or the editor of the TSU here. I'll work for that man. I'll work for Marcus Smith. He's my boss for the, for the here. I got I to gotta obey his commands at all times. <laughs> Tiger students get it into campus activities here. That's what I like about Texas Southern. Let's get into this basketball game. 7-0, to the Lady Tigers lead it. And Nicole Smith saves it, but just a little bit too late. Mississippi Valley will inbound this basketball under the Tigers' rim, and they'll go coast to coast. Devilettes on the year. They sit at 6-8, and 9-16 and 16 overall. They're fighting for that eighth spot. They're right in front of Prairie View A&M University. And I can see them getting that spot. I see them. They, Valley deserves to get in. You know, they two games, a game and a half above Prairie View. I think they can keep the momentum and probably get that final spot in the tournament. I like, I like Valley this year as opposed to last season. And some hustle and bustling going on in front of the Tiger bench. Ashley Beals. Briasia McElrath. It's always good to see two basketball players hustling for the ball. And you always going to see the McElrath. She's always the aggressor of the team. She's like their enforcer almost, <laughs> along with Shamal Brooks. You know, she's a sophomore and so young. I just like if McElrath can tr control herself at times and keep her aggressiveness, she can be a very good player for this team in the conference. Great block by Caitlin Palmer as the Tigers end up coming away with it. McElrath has to dribble out the press. Yeah, get over that line. Nine to zero, your score. The Tigers pitching a shutout here on the hardwood. We'll talk more about TSU baseball and TSU softball a little later tonight. Five left on the shot clock. Kennerson has it, top of the key. Driving in the lane, she loses it. LaShawn Ebron comes away with the steal. She's only five foot three. Beals going in the lane and she loses it. And you just talked about it, McElrath being the floor general. I mean, she swatted that ball like she was blocking it. That's the thing about her. She can play ultra aggressive at times. Sometimes it gets the best of them. You know, she can get under people's skin, but sometimes she just got to control it. Just at times, you know, she can be patient control herself because a lot of people that's aggressive sometimes can't control themselves with the ball in their hands so she can get that down she like I said she'll be a very good player for this team Haley inside to Tarrant Tarrant 
All the way from Chicago, Illinois, it's Ebron. No good. And here come the Lady Tigers back on the push. Palmer looks for Kennerson. Kennerson going up again. Kennerson with two more points. Dominant performance right now for TSU. Pitching a shutout. Clearly right now, that loss against the Golden Lions is not in their heads no more. Taren takes it. Couldn't put really in. Last time I saw a shutout here, I was on the mound for Texas up. <laughs> China Ewan inside to Brooks. Brooks for two. To the free throw line to complete the three-point play. And this is what I like right now with the Lady Tigers. They're playing mad. They're playing angry. They knew they never should have lost a game against Valley early in the season, a couple of weeks back. And they knew they should have lost against the Golden Lions. That's actually good this season. They knew they should have lost at home by double digits, so they're coming out, taking their anger out on this game, on the Lady Devil Lips. And also, in that, also on that day, the Tigers, both teams lost to the Devil Lips, or to the Delta, to Delta Devils, the they men's both, and the women's. Yeah, the men's lost, gave up 100 points. You'll never see that ever again, I think, in the coach Mike <laughs> Davis, and that was rare. Devil Lips trying to put it inside the basket. Shot is up, no good. Rebound, no. And they'll have to reset the shot clock. And great defense there. Here's Kennison with it. I mean, she just stood still. No foul there as Kennison gets up. First letting them play this game. God, Kennison hey, of one possession. <laughs> just now, I just seen three fouls just occur right in front of my eyes. As long as you call it both ways. Exactly. As long as you call it both ways. Who are some Lady Tigers impressing you early on so far tonight? Well, besides Joyce Kennison, as always, she always impressed me. I like everybody right now on the Tigers. They, everybody's playing aggressive. You know, everybody playing aggressive on the defensive side of the ball. I like the impact of Shamal Brooks and throwing that paint. And Valley just scored their first buckets of the game. But Shamal Brooks, like I said, is controlling the paint. And she's playing a big part right now in this first quarter. Christy Palmer scores the first two for the Devilettes, averaging 8.8 .8 on the season. She'll help her average out tonight. China Ewing driving the baseline, loses it. And it looks as though the Devilettes have a game plan. Here comes Haley. Haley coast to coast. Haley can't put it in. Knocked out by Palmer. Caitlin Palmer just swatted it out of bounds. Now, we talked about the men's game. We want to make a men's reference here. Kevin Scott being from Nebraska. Caitlin Palmer right up under him from Wichita, Kansas. Now, I know they play some basketball in Kansas. Oh, yeah, some We know they play basketball, basketball in Kansas. Kansas. <laughs> Nebraska and Kansas, when they come to basketball, are two different states. I, there are some ballers in Kansas now. Nebraska's more football, as yeah, we know. More, more football. State. That's right. 14 to 4 as the Devilettes add to their point total. And Coach Perry calls a quick timeout. She'll talk it up with her team. We'll let you talk it up with your team back at home while you're watching Lady Tiger basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Tigers lead at 14 to 4. Where you be going out to, man? Where you be hanging at, man? Welcome back to Lady Tiger Basketball. Tigers lead it 14 to 4. Caitlin Palmer working on Tarrant. Ewing's driving to the lane. Here come the Devilettes. Shot is up from the outside, no good. And it may be an over the back call. Now, actually, it's going to go against Shamaya Brooks. Shamaya Brooks with her first foul of the evening. Shamaya Brooks, you said ultra aggressive. Ultra aggressive. <laughs> ultra aggressive for both, really, Shamaya Brooks and McElroy, but more 
I think more of the fact that I think. Oh Jackson my goodness! Oh bit. my! Here she come, Kenners. Yes. With the left hand. Kenerson just saw that lane as she just pushed the ball out to herself. Kenya Haley from Greensboro, North Carolina, running the offense for the Devilettes. And Kenerson with another steal. Kenerson's all over the place. Kenerson to the lane. And Kennison just couldn't reel it in there. Nevertheless, she'll go to the free throw line to shoot too. It's going to be real interesting how this season plays out going into tournament time. Biggest question for me with this Tigers team, they, they, when they're playing like this, connecting on all centers of the ball of the game, they the best team in sweat. But like I said, when the game started, a consistent score. I think a person like China Ewan as a freshman, you look at Kaylin Palmer, her first year playing for the Tigers. Those two players should give Joyce Kennison some help on that end of the ball because I think if they can step up and be consistent when it comes to tournament time, don't let the pressure get to them and seize the moment, they can win the tournament. And we talk about Grambling as well. That's a team right there as well they got to watch out for. Kalina Morris checks into the contest for the Tigers. Here's Christy Parker. Christy Parker from Indianola, Mississippi. Say that ten times. Indianola, Mississippi. Say it three times fast. <laughs> Tigers still lead by 12. Nicole Smith into Morris. There you go. Morris just couldn't put it in. Morris all the way from Greensboro, North Carolina. Long way from home. Also on the opposite side, Kenya Haley from Mississippi Valley. She's from Greensboro, North Carolina. Transferred from North Carolina a and I wonder if they know each other. They probably do. Most more than likely. Two basketball players in the same <laughs> city. I, nine times out of ten, you'll know that person. It's always good to play against some of your friends, you know, at the college yeah, level. Exactly. It really is. Com makes it competitive, you know, family. A lot of trash talking going on. Yeah, it's friendly. All in fun. That's right. Especially the AAU ball, the way the, the air we living in. Oh, right yeah. Now. Did you get a chance to play in the AAU ball yourself? I played. I played, but I never went to like, the big tournaments that right. was in Vegas. Oh, man, that's a huge one. Man, I wish I wish I did, but, you know, things happen for a reason. Yes. It's Parker in the paint. Paint, paint, paint. Two points for Christy Parker inside the paint. Christy Parker adds to the Devilettes point total with eight. They still trail by 10. Tigers trying to close it out on a good note here. Here's Palmer. Nicole Smith takes the lane. Nicole Smith. Count the bucket. She'll go to the free throw line to complete the three-point play. It was very important. It was a, that was a big bucket. They needed to score in that final, the final seconds of this quarter to get back on track. Because you've seen Valley start to kind of reel it in a little bit. So at the end of this quarter, that was very that was a very, very big bucket for the Lady Tigers. They're having a conversation. I think they're arguing about who the foul was on. The foul is going to be chunked up to Alexandria Tarrant. Head coach Jessica Kern in her first year. We'll talk more about that in just a bit. Great job she's doing with the Lady Devil Lids. Nicole Smith misses the free throw and an over the back foul. And it's going to go against Kalina Morris. And that's going to put the Devil Lids at the free throw line. Put them at the free throw line about 24.9 on the clock. Luckily, not in the bonus going into the second quarter. Luckily, because they got five. A pretty even game when, when it comes to fouls. You know, we talked about that early possession earlier where we thought we'd seen three fouls, but you have to call it on both sides. <laughs> That's really. right. So if they would have called it on Devil Lynch, Coach Perry, Coach Perry would have had some words like, hey, why ain't called a foul on my end? And vice versa. Ashley Beals to the free throw line on the season, shooting 58%. Ashley Beals, a SWAC player of the week last week. With that high arc free throw shot. 20 to 10 is the score. 
Puinge into the contest for the Lady Tigers. Not sure if they're going to play for the last shot. I think they may. With 16 seconds left to go. 10 seconds left now. Left side to Kennerson. Kennerson trying to create some space. Looks for Smith. Smith has to do something with it. Two, oh. one, oh my. Oh. Slipped out of hand. 0.8 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. It's going to be a long shot from here. Kenya Arnold, and she passes it right back, and they'll concede the shot. Nevertheless, Lady Tigers lead it by 10, 20 to 10. We've played 10. We've got 30 more here to go. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball on the TSU Sports Network. Why did she pass it back? Why did she pass it back? <laughs> That, that was just as bad as old girl trying to shoot the shot and came on right back down with it. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond. Welcome back to Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. We'll probably hear from Marcus Smith in just a minute. I'm sure he's somewhere on the sidelines finding us some interviews for today's game. Hopefully. Mr. Over 21. Mr. Editor-in-Chief of the Herald. <laughs> Got a chance to write a couple columns back in my day for the Herald. A couple baseball columns, basketball here and there, softball. Shiny Ewing. Mikael Raff drive. Good pass. Puts it in the hands of Brooks. Count the bucket. Great pass. A little 4 or 5 action right there with McElrath and Shamal Brooks. Two most aggressive players, not only part of the team, but in the sway. Mississippi Valley going into the lane. Bills, the turnaround. No good. Just can't put it inside the bucket. Had a smooth shot. She came up a little limp right there. This Palmer. Baseline. And misses the shot. Christy Parker. Parker leads the Devilettes with six. Nice baseline shot. And Kenya Haley adds to her point total tonight. What do you like so far about the Lady Tigers after that first quarter? Being aggressive. I think that first quarter, you know, it, it, clearly the Golden Lions lost not in their heads no more. Coach Hayes probably has some ch choice words for them these past couple of days after they lost. And... It's not in their heads no more. They're playing aggressive. They're not scared to shoot the ball. They're giving Joyce Kennison some help on the scoring department. Here's a shot by Haley. And Shamire Brooks comes away with the rebound. On the offensive side, you talked about it. You like Joyce Kennison, but you like the help that she's going to get during this contest. They're up by eight points here. Yep. Second yep. leading scorer is Shamire Brooks with five. And Shamal Brooks is a person, you know, I, that was my key player. You know, she didn't start against Valley last time, but she had 12 points off the bench, giving five for nine shooting. So, like we said, ever since that Prairie View game for Shamal Brooks, she's been, she found her way in the system. I guess she wasn't nervous anymore. 
you know, you come into a new team, a new university, a new program, a new coach, really is just a, everything's new for you. Everything's so fast, so then the middle of the season, you can probably catch on, and now you're confident, you're, you're playing to your potential, why they got you here for a reason. What are some of these Lady Tigers like on campus? You ever see any of them around? You know what? It's crazy. I rarely see them on campus because I'm barely on campus. You know, I <laughs> you're moving, class in a way. No, I'm point A to point B. You know, I'm, I'm not the type of guy that be you know just hanging on a tiger wall <laughs> for a few hours. You know, I'm I'm straight business on campus, nigga. I understand. Being a student here at the Texas Southern University, it's not an easy task. Not easy at all. Ask Marcus Smith, <laughs> aka David Aldrich. <laughs> 22 to 4. I saw Marcus Smith hanging around at the Super Bowl. You know, he was walking around and just moving around, man. See, that's big time, Stash. You know, <laughs> we, you know, we had the Super Bowl. Come on, man. That's that's, that's big time. Only the editor in chief of the Hero can get the exclusive pass, the exclusive access to the Super Bowl. That was the greatest Super Bowl that I've seen in my eyes. We had some, you know, uh, former alums down here that weekend, Mr. Tony Wiley, who I'm sure Marcus got a chance to hang out with as well. Marcus former former editor in chief of the TSU Herald as well. Oh, see, there you go. The sports go. editor, sorry about that. Sports the former editor. Former editor, not a current sports editor. editor you that's know, right. the connection right there with the two <laughs> guys. You know, we can't do that, man. You know, we we not like Marcus Smith. You know, we 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 still trying I'm still trying to get on that level of, of, of his stature. Twenty two to sixteen. Lady Tigers lead it by six. The Devil Ents have made somewhat of a comeback here. China Ewan will take the shot. And they left her open and just didn't turn out her way. Jump ball. It's going to be a possession arrow for the Tigers. 7-11 left to go here in the first half. Lucky 7-11. And with China Ewan, when you open like that, you've got to have the, the guts and the confidence to take that shot. And we've seen her make those shots at times. We've seen her make those shots. she got to be more aggressive on the offensive side of the ball. Palmer. No good. Here come the Devil X. It's Stormy Vaughn. From South Haven, Mississippi. We were talking earlier about head coach Jessica Kern in her first year here at Valley. We talked about that earlier, Keel. You know, a lot of SWAC coaches on the women's side, I think we have four of them in their first year. That's Mississippi Valley, Prairie View, I think it was Alabama AM. Alabama AM, yep. And I think it was one more. Ooh. I'll find it for you. We're going to find that one. But nevertheless, you know, a lot of strides being made. Jessica Kern coming from Furman University. Taking a step up. And she's doing a great job for the, for the Devil Edge. You know, you have some key wins this season. Beating TSU. That's probably the biggest one of your, of your season. Yuinge Buckets. Knock it down. And I think they're going to give her a two. Not a three. 24-16. And you love seeing that shot from Yuinge going down because we've seen – Ooh, at times, she wouldn't take them type of shots. Sometimes she'll, she'll be nervous and timid to pass them up. But you want to see Kuinga get into the system and, and be consistent and knock them key shots down and give Joyce some help and other players as well. That is send Alexandria Tarrant to the free throw line. Alexandria all the way from Chicago, Illinois, my hometown, Simeon High School. So great people came out of Simeon High School as well. Oh, yeah. It's a basketball school for girls and boys, not yeah. to mention a baseball school as well also. It's all around, all around the school. Just so happens the school I went to, you know, beat them a couple of times in baseball. Oh, That's gotcha, what it was. Gotcha. <laughs> Alexandria Tarr looking for the second of two, no good. And Artavia Ford, excuse me, checked that Isis Lane checks into the contest. Here comes Kenya Arnold. We'll have to reset. And Beals couldn't hang on to it. Still Valley ball as it kicks off a Tiger defender. Ebron will reset. Here's Parker. Parker with the floater. And Beals with the rebound. Off the bucket. Count it. Turnaround jumper's good. She don't average close. She don't average 16 and 10 for no reason. That, that, is, that is just 
a grown woman play right there, getting the offensive rebound, putting it back up over the trees. She not, she's not a top three player, top five player in the swag for no reason. Kawinke. She's going to take the shot. And the Tigers are not good from the three-point range tonight. Valley still coming off a loss Saturday to, to the Delta, to the Lady Pandas of Prairie View A&M. And that's one of them losses, you know, you're on the road at Prairie View. Call that a trap game. That's what we call those around where I'm from. We'll probably hear from Marcus Smith shortly. I'd like to hear what Coach Perry is talking about in that timeout. I'm sure she's, you know, going to talk to the girls. The Devilettes are kind of back into this contest. The Tigers had a 10-point lead early on. The lead is now only six. It's a ball game, though. It wasn't like how it was. You didn't really expect Coach Kern and her troops to come out and get shut out today. You wasn't going to see that, but you like, you love the stuff you see from the Tigers. But you got to keep it up. You got to keep the pedal to the metal. You got to keep it going. Isis Lane to Ewan. Four left on the shot clock. Ewan has to take the shot. Nicole Smith has to take the shot. She did not have enough time to dribble when she got it. Shot clock violation goes against the Lady Tigers. Media timeout on the floor. 24 to 18 your score. And the Lady Tigers still lead it by six. We'll be right back. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. My name is Zach. My mom works, so I ride Metro Speed 2 to school every day. I'm the drum major for Cashmere High School's Thunder Soul Marching Band. Every time I hit the field, it's like a dream. I just feed off the energy. But my real dream is to go from the Thunder Soul to the Ocean of Soul at TSU. And Metro's gonna take me there. I'm Zach, and this is my Metro. Lady Tigers, still it by six here. Delta Devilettes with the basketball now as they go from right to left. My name is Zach. Screen. And loose ball there as Kenya Haley gets her own rebound, trying to put it up, and Beals gets it. Kenya Haley will go to the free throw line to shoot the two. Let's go over to Marcus Smith and see what he has on the sidelines. Hey guys, at the break, Coach, play, Coach Hayes Perry was talking about one thing. She wanted to get her players' placement on the offense in check. Want, notice one thing, they're up big on the Mississippi Valley Lady Devils. That's because their offense has been patient thus far. That's something Coach Wilson was talking to me about before the game earlier. So we'll see how they fare later in the rest of this quarter. Back to you, Nick, Akil. Marcus Smith grabbing all the information in on the sidelines, 24 to 19, your score. He has some interesting points. Yeah, and I, and I want to, before we got to break, I want to talk about the last two positions that we've seen from the Lady Tigers. They, are, they can't be scared to shoot the ball. You have to be aggressive and shoot the ball. When the ball is not in Joy's hands and the play's not ran through her and the, or it's ran through China or it's ran through Kaylin Palmer, they have to shoot the ball. Ice is lane, you have to shoot. When you open, take the shot, be aggressive, get the defense on their heels because that's the main thing. You have to get the defense on their heels and shoot the ball. Kalina Morris gets the easy two inside the paint. Great assist there. Kalina Morris adding to the point total tonight. Here's Beals. Oh, my goodness. Here's Kenderson now. She may go coast to coast. Not sure if she'll go to the free throw line and shoot two, but she was fouled. They may call it on the floor. It's 
trees of the Tigers. That paint is going to be a big factor in this game. But we've seen last game that it was back and forth all the way, back and forth, and Valley squeaked in with the win due to the last three minutes of that game. To win this game, I like the impact that we're seeing from our interior, Isis Lane, Makarov, Shamal Brooks. I like what I'm seeing from the Lady Tigers this far on the defensive side of the ball. Joyce Kinnerson adding some more points to her point total. She leads the team in all scores with 12. And that's going to be a kick ball as it touched right below her leg. Right off Joyce Kinnerson. Joyce Kinnerson stands at 5'4", Akil. LaShawn Ebron, the point guard for the Devilettes, stands at 5'3". Great matchup there on the sides. Great matchup. They both play with a lot of heart. Really. Oh, yes. Yeah. They love playing a lot. And she's only a freshman. LaShawn Ebron could be a big, a key player for this team in the future. She's a starting freshman like how Joyce started last year. But obviously the, the offenses ran more through Joyce last season along with Keanu Vines. But this year, good thing for Ebron that she has a player like Ashley Bills that can mold her to a player in this, in this system. And Ebron from Washington, D.C., as we know, head coach Jessica Kern has also, she also has some East Coast ties, also being a part of the CIAA conference back when she was a head coach. Also the assistant coach, Ronnie Finch, also a former recruiting coordinator at a Johnson C. Smith inside the CIAA. Kenya Arnold. Beals with the rebound. And Beals couldn't hang on to it. You see right now through this first half that the ref is letting them play. The ref is letting them play in this game. You see that on both sides of the ball for the Devil and 10 Lady Tigers. China Ewan has it, but she passed it up. She's not confident about her shot. She looks for Isis Lane. And a three-second violation on the Tigers as Kalina Morris got tagged for the three-second. We talked about this. You have to shoot the ball. I understand you're a freshman. I understand all of that. But we're 12 games, and it's a 13 game of the season in conference play. You have to, you have to give them some help. You have to shoot the ball if you're trying to use in that possession. Almost stolen by Palmer, just right through the hands. And still, Devilettes basketball in front of the Tigers bench. Twenty-eight, twenty-three. Beals over Morris. Rebound, Ewing. Tigers looking for the push here. Looks for Kennerson. Kennerson into Morris. Morris couldn't hang on to it. Two seniors in the starting lineup for the Devilettes, Haley and Beals. They'll see their last action of their college career here this year. They'll definitely miss Beals. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. She, the best, when I've been covering the swag for the last three years, she was their main person. And, you know, I, what she's been doing the last this season especially, this, this, this is her best season stats-wise and record-wise. So last year wasn't a very good year. It was nothing but Ashley Bills. And then now this year, you have some help. You have a new coach who's up for Coach of the Year. That's a candidate, a strong candidate right now, Coach Jessica Kern. And what Ashley Bills is doing, buying into the system, to the new system, 16 and 10, it's, it's marvelous as a senior. And an offensive foul on Joyce Kennerson. I mean, she went up against two defenders. <laughs> Hey, somebody, look, and one got knocked down. Man, somebody <laughs> has to take them shots. Is she in so, the weight room? I think so. She's in I, the weight room. Every day. I would, I would not be surprised. <laughs> More than me. More than me. You know, but you pass the ball around, nobody's taking them. Hey, you got to do what you got to do to get – get bring the momentum back to you because even though you have a five-point lead, all momentum is on the Lady devil that side. And you see right now, yeah, they was down 15 early in the game. But they're not scared of the Lady Tigers. They're not scared of being on the road because they know they have their number beating them early in the season. Kenya Haley adding two more points for the Devilettes. Here comes Kennerson. Kennerson can't put it inside. But Ewing follows up with the rebound. Count the bucket. 30 to 25. And the Lady Tigers now lead by five. The lead was 10 early. Actually, the lead was 14 early on. 14, yeah. So the Devilettes have come all the way back. They've climbed the ladder. 
They trail by five. Christy Park with the basketball. I like the way she plays. Haley to the lane and blocking foul. And she'll go to the free throw line to shoot two. I think they're going to put that foul on Isis Lane, her first of the evening. Isis Lane, the freshman from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I wonder if she's related to our president, Austin Lane. <laughs> that, that would be kind of a, a stretch, but it would be crazy. That's like the distant cousin of something. Oh, that's President Austin Lane said, yeah, Isis Lane is my sixth cousin or something like that. I would be quite shocked. Somehow, somewhere that happens. Kenya Haley hits the first. Kenya Haley hits the second. Kenya Haley on the season. She's usually a, a decent free throw shooter. 68%. So just about 40 seconds left to go here in the first half. The Lady Tigers trying to take the lead into the locker room. China Ewing goes up. Shot is blocked. And China Ewing touched it. She didn't actually have possession of it, but while she was out of bounds, she touched the basketball, which caused for turnover on the Tigers. And now you give the Lady Devil Lids one shot before half. It's like a one-second difference between a game clock and a shot clock. Now that was a big possession for TSU now. Going into halftime, Lady Devilettes have all the momentum in the world right now on their side. Going into that half, that locker room confident as ever against the Lady Tigers. Here's Ebron. Into Arnold. Arnold takes it into the paint. And traveling violation. She tried a little bit too much there. She tried to dribble into three defenders. And it just didn't work out in her favor. The Lady Tigers have a chance to put up two more points, before, at least two more points before they go into the locker room. We'll hear from head coach Janeta Hayes-Perry as Joyce Kenderson, nope. 30 to 27, your score. The Lady Tigers lead it by three. Question, cut, and Learn something new. Started off real strong for the Lady Tigers, but then the Devilettes picked it up on defense. Momentum, they found the way they could get them. Lady Tigers on their heels, and that's what's going on with the Lady Devil. They're not, they're not scared of playing against the Lady Tigers at all. Even though they had a 14-point lead, they looking at Coach Clay Hayes, the Tigers, and saying, hey, we're not scared of y'all. We beat y'all already. So we're supposed to be scared of y'all, and that's what's going on right now. Coach, you know the Hayes period? Coach, you got off to an early start in that first quarter. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. It's about many. Sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work. Together. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. But like, to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving custom jewelry. Here you have it from Coach Hayes Perry, not very happy with that first half. Yeah, she played a lot of young players like Isis Lane and the others. So you look at the offense that was going on, it was quite timid. It was timid to shoot the ball. It wasn't being aggressive like the usual players that they were playing like Shamal Brooks or Macron because they're the more aggressive players. And we got to look at this second half and like, hey, Shamal Brooks is in foul trouble. She has to stay out of foul trouble. They want to win this game. She was a key player, a key player, a very big player in that first quarter. Well, let's see what happens when we return. It's halftime here at H and PE Arena, and the Lady Tigers lead 30 to 27. You're watching Lady Tiger basketball here on the TSU Sports Network.
Percy Cruzo. If you haven't been to French's Chicken, or if it's been a while since your last visit, no place does chicken like Frenchie's. Our chicken is seasonized with our blend of Creole herbs and spices. Our side dishes include the tastiest greens and red beans and rice you'll ever put in your mouth. Try our new King Row rotisserie chicken at our Scott Street location. Come on by French's Chicken, where the taste lasts forever. Hello. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away.
Welcome back to Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Nick Strong alongside Akeel Williams and Marcus D. Smith. Lady Tigers lead at Akeel 30-27 going into the locker room. They lead by three. They'll reset it here as the clock didn't start. The Lady Tigers got out to a 14-point lead, pitched a shutout halfway through the first quarter, but the Devilettes kind of got their number and they just kind of came back. Two key stats you had. The fouls, 10 fouls for TSU to only five for Valley State. And you look at McElrath, Brooks, two people that was in the starting five that was in foul trouble in that first half. So that was led the momentum in the comeback for the, for the Devilettes. You look at points off of turnovers, 11 for Valley, six for TSU. So that was a key stat that broke out to me. But everything else, TSU was looking solid. They were looking solid in the first quarter, but then the foul trouble, that's what got McElrath and Brooks on the bench, and it led to Valley going inside the paint and attack. Yeah, Kalina Morris had to check into the contest, as Coach talked about right before the half with Marcus on the sideline. She was playing some players that don't get a that don't get a chance to play at those given times during the game. So, you know, new experiences bring new situations, and new situations brought a 14-point lead all the way down to a three-point lead. Yeah, they got to learn how to control the lead, control the game and bring the lead, extend the lead, should I say, for the Lady Tigers. And that's what, that's what happened in the second quarter. They ain't learn how, they ain't learn how to finish. They ain't learn how to close. Because a lot of people, they didn't have playing time, got into the game, and didn't know how to control it. Ashley Beals misses both free throws as the Tigers back down on their side of the basketball court. That foul is going to go against number 12, Kenya Arnold. The junior from Clarksdale, Mississippi. I talked about Mississippi Valley having two seniors on the court out there tonight. They have a freshman and a sophomore and a junior to go along with it. That's Christy Parker and Kenya Arnold. Here's the first free throw by Ewing, and Ewing misses the first. If you're in the locker room, your head coach, Janita hayes Perry, what are you telling you? What are you telling your Lady Tigers? Well, I want to tell, first of all, the first thing I would say is be more aggressive on the scoring department. Joyce can't be the only one that's giving you the scoring low and taking all the shots. Joyce can assist with four for seven, 12 points. Second in scoring was Shamal Brooks with five, and she was she was in foul trouble, and she took she was two for two. Shining Ewan and Kaylin Palmer combined three for three for nine and combined seven points. I'm um, looking at them two players. They have to be more aggressive because I look at them. Those are the other two players on the perimeter with Joyce that can score. We seen in the first half that a couple of times Shining Ewan didn't take the shot. She can shoot the ball. She's a scorer. She's a scoring freshman on it for this team. And for them to have this lead and for them to win this game, she won't even go help scoring. Nicole Smith has it inside the paint. Shot is up and a little bit out of control. She's whistled for the offensive foul. Nicole Smith also from Oklahoma. Two Oklahomians on this. Texas Southern Ball Club. That's her third foul. Lady Tigers tonight playing without Artavia Ford. So as we see, you know, Nicole Smith is going to get into the game. Kalina Morris is going to get into the game. That's what Coach was talking about, putting these new players in. Not necessarily new players, but like I say, new situations at, at, at some given time. Exactly. You can, yeah, you can really say new players and well, new minutes because they're still young. This, we got to look at this TSU team. This is a young team. There's really not a senior leader on this team, per se. You know, you look at the leader, you look at Joyce Kennison, she's only a sophomore. The loss of Artelia for today, her being out, plays a big part of why they're not, you know, having a bigger lead. You know, because you look at if Artelia Ford is playing, then you probably wouldn't have Shamal Brooks and Brazier McGrath and foul trouble. Probably only one of the two in foul trouble. And it, bring, it takes away the scoring load as well. Shamaya Brooks, the only senior on this Texas Southern Ball Club. There's the deuce from the Devilettes make the score 30 to 29, and the Lady Tigers only lead by one. And she's new to the team as well. So she's a senior, but this is her first year under the coach Chase Perry system. Here's Ewing. Let's see if the Lady Tigers can get something going. Joyce Kennison driving to the lane. And Ashley Beals comes away with the rebound. Devilettes have a chance to take the lead here on this possession. Christy Parker buckets. 
You got the lead, and you haven't seen the Lady Tigers score in like almost five minutes. They didn't score since early in the second, since the midway point in the second quarter. So that's an alarming stat right now. They have to find some offense somewhere for somebody. It's Joyce Kennison time right now. Ewing wanted to get it to her. Here's Mikhail Rav with the right elbow. Mikhail Rav takes the shot, air ball. Trying to go coast to coast was Kenya Haley. And the Lady Tigers come away with the rebound. Here comes the full court pressure. They've got to get it across the timeline. Here's Kenderson. Looks for Morris. Morris into the paint. Morris puts it inside the twine. There you go. Joyce Kenderson creating that whole play right there. Getting the ball under the court, under the devil is goal. Took it down the lane and found Morris under the basketball. Easy deuce. Beals from outside. And what a save. There's Kenderson all alone. And I wish she was a little bit taller. But I'll take two more points from the sophomore point guard from Port Arthur, Texas. She has 14 on the evening. Leads all scores. Two Devilettes in double digits. It's Christy Parker and Kenya Haley. Ashley Beals held to eight points so far. Here's Haley again off the glass. Rebound. Palmer. There's Kennerson. Kennerson passed up on the shot. She'll say, we'll set up some offense here. We'll run a little clock off the time. We'll run a little time off the clock. And we'll play a little offense here. There's the double pick. There's Kennerson. And she loses it. And Kennerson tried to <laughs> razzle dazzle. She's out there hustling and trying. She plays with her heart. She's 5'4", but plays like she's 6'4". Delta Devilettes, 6 and 8 in swag play. They sit in 7th place right in front of the Lady Panthers of Prairie View A&M. There's the floater from LaShawn E. Braun. Ties the game at 34. She's gonna be good as well. She's on the other first. She's gonna be good in this system. I like her in this current system. I like her for the future of the Devil H. Giving you not scoring double digits throughout the season, but hey, she's gonna bump that up. I can see drastically these next few seasons for the Devil H. And she's only five foot three again, may I add. Mikhail Rav showing a little move as she drove to the lane. And she kind of came right down on a Devilette defender. And there's Ebron playing a little defense. She's quick. She is quick. Last year, the Devilettes were 3-26 overall, Akil. This year, as you talked about, head coach Jessica Kern has to be in the conversation for coach of the year. 9-16 so far. She has to. And I wouldn't be surprised if she possibly wins it for some for some reason, she wins it. You know, I would not be surprised. You see, Grambling at this position last year in the top four. Alabama State was here. TSU was here. Selga was one of the teams. Holly Pombla had the consideration or that, or just the current I'm looking at. But I would not be surprised if she wins play coach of the year in this conference. Last touch out of bounds by a Lady Tiger. 36-34. Bridge and Mikhail Rath on that last bucket for the Lady Tigers. Parker to inbound. Parker working a baseline. Now get it back to Ebron. Ebron loses it as Beals gets it. 3 2 1 left on the shot clock. Spin a Rooney. Bucket. There she go. There she go. That's Ashley Beals. Tiger's going to need two right here. Here's Ewing. She passed up again. Gets it into Mikhail Rath. Mikhail Rath high off the glass, and she'll go to the free throw line and shoot two. Alexandria Tarrant is going to be whistled for that foul. That's going to be her second. Excuse me, her third. Media timeout on the floor, and this game is knotted at 36. Lady Tigers and the Devilettes of Mississippi Valley State University. We'll be right back.
Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability to accurately reflect you and the special person receiving your custom jewelry. You've captured her heart. Now, take her breath away. Uptown Diamond offers an experience like no other. From the 100% customization to the true lifetime guarantee, we identify the traditional four C's, cut, color, clarity, and carrot. But capture is something only Uptown Diamond provides. Capture is a diamond's intangible ability. Hey, Nick, what was talked about over on the sideline was all defensive purposes. Keep your hands up and active on defense. And, hey, Mississippi Valley is playing in a zone right now. What Coach Janetta hayes Page wants them to do is step up. Also, force them to the baseline. That last possession down there, she shouldn't have got that shot easily off, especially with the clock winding down. Three seconds left on the shot clock. That's one thing she wants them to perfect. And then on offense, hey, just take one possession at a time. We're up by one. It's been a close game. We had a close game last time. She wants, just wants them to take it slow and play their game. It's their home court. It's their game to win. Guys? On that last possession, Mississippi Valley was inbounding the basketball and a careless mistake as the Lady Tigers get it right back. China Ewing gets it up top to Joyce Kennison. Here's Ewing driving the baseline here. Kennison will have to reset. Marcus has some good information. He talked about that on being patient on offense again. That's definitely something that they need. Here's Mikhail Rath at the right elbow. Ewing driving into the lane. She'll have to reset again. As she couldn't get it to Joyce Kennison. Miscommunication, lack of being aggressive. And, you know, you want to be patient on offense, but right now in this point, you've been a little bit too patient. You're trying to find the best shot, but, hey, you only up one now. You had a 14-point lead. I know you had foul trouble, but you have to find a way to, to – somebody got to find momentum. Somebody has to catch fire on the opposite side of the ball if they want to – win this game because it's too close to call right now. Parker to the free throw line and as she got into the paint. Ashley Beals clean it up but Christy Parker coming away limping. They might have to stop this contest. She can't walk as, as, as much. Here's Kenderson outside the Palmer. No. China Ewing gets her hand on this. Kalina Morris does now. Kalina Morris off the glass and she'll go to the free throw line to shoot too. I like that shot from Kaitlyn Palmer. I like that shot. Have to be aggressive. In the first half on, shot six threes, but only made one, and that was from Kaitlyn Palmer earlier, but I like that shot from her, and I like the rebound from Morris as well. Kalina Morris to the free throw line to shoot two. Yes. 38 to 38 is the score, and Christy Parker comes out to contest. The training staff will take a look at her. She's limping on that left ankle as LaShawn Ebron comes back into the contest. Morris with the second shot. And this game will remain tied at 38. And that's good for the Lady Devils because she's one of your she's one of your role players, averaging close to nine points per game off the bench for your Devils. So that's 
See if she can get back in the game. You don't want to see nobody get injured in any type of game. Let's revisit those keys to victory here for the Tigers, Akia, from early on. Well, you have to give Joyce Hill right now. She's the leading scorer. She has 14 of the 38 points, which is not bad at all because you see in the first quarter before they got into foul trouble, Brooks and McElroy was giving her that low, well, especially Shamal Brooks. McElroy, really, she ain't scoring the game until now, but they got some help from other players, but they didn't keep it up in the second quarter. But check your house. It's a close game right now. This is a big win, a must win for y'all, for the Lady Tigers. If they lose this game, they tie with, they tie with Southern and Pamela for that fourth spot. So this is a key win, a key game for the Lady Tigers. And last but not least, be aggressive. Have to be aggressive. Get to the free throw line. And they're doing that thus far. Even though the referees are letting them play a little bit, they're getting to the lane. They're getting, they being aggressive. They're going to their paint. They're going to their players like Morris, McAuliffe, and Brooks. But I want to see the perimeter players like China Yu and Kaylin Palmer take more shots and be more aggressive on the perimeter side of the ball. Here's Kenderson, and she brings it across. Lady Tigers lead it by two. China Ewing, and that's going to be an offensive foul. She leaned in with that free arm there. China Ewing, two quick fouls. And she'll come out the contest quick as Makina Puinke will enter the contest. Lady Tigers playing with a three-man rotation, on, actually a four-man rotation on the bench. The Devilettes playing with the two-man rotation on the bench. Ebron driving to the lane. Here's the floater. And Mikhail Rapp gets it and almost takes out one of our cameramen on the sidelines. Thank God that didn't happen. We didn't, need, we didn't need no injuries on the cameraman nor McAuliffe as well. That's good old JR over there. And Meshack over on the other camera angle to the left. Lonzo Giles, the man up top, getting you the wide shot. Here's Mikhail Rav, hits the first free throw. Mikhail Rath on the season shooting 54%. So she's at least going to hit one or two, right? Uh, one or two. She 54%. You're going <laughs> to knock down one or two. She knocked down the first one. Hopefully she'll make the second one go two for two. And, and she, she does. <laughs> <laughs> 42 to 38. Here we go. Lady Tigers trying to bring it down the stretch. They lead by four. Christy Parker back into the contest for the Devilettes. Here's Arnold, looking for Haley. Haley going up, and there's Shamaya Brooks. Kennerson all pass. alone. Kennerson put it in for two. Great outlet pass, great pass from Shamaya Brooks with the assist. Easy layup with the left hand from Joyce Kennerson. Head coach Jessica Kern doesn't like what she sees. They trail by six. Timeout on the floor. We'll take it with 44 to 38. Your score. And the Lady Tigers trying to get that tenth win in the SWAT. beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes.
find the fabric of it. Lady Tigers lead it by six. Trying to reel in that 10th victory in SWAC play this season. But if Stormy Vaughn has anything to do with it, I don't think she wants that to happen. She knocks the deuce in off the backboard. 44 to 40 is the score. And the Tigers now lead by four. And you see right now the Lady Devilettes is in the zone right now. They are trying to force the Lady Tigers to shoot that ball. And so far we've seen through the first three quarters and a half that TSU was not really shooting the ball very well from the perimeter. Lady Tigers hit a couple of threes early on but was cold ever since. Pawinke getting up top to Kennerson. And there's the Kennerson Ebron matchup. Palmer with the jump step. And Palmer a little bit off guard as she's whistled for the offensive foul. That's going to be her first. And we've seen six of those, we've seen like six of those possessions throughout this game of them not shooting the ball, and for them not shooting the ball, it's leading to plays like that, like charging fouls and turnovers. Devilettes getting back into this contest. Who are some of the Devilettes that impress you here? Well, I like to play, I like to play the freshman point guard. I like how Ebron is playing. She's not showing up hard on the stat sheet with two points, but she's controlling the game as a tip, as a freshman point guard in the game like this because they know they're not scared of the Lady Tigers. And for her to be the point guard and going toe-to-toe -to -toe against Joyce Kennison, it's a very impressive matchup for her. I think she may have got away with an offensive foul there again. I know they called it last time. They didn't call it this time. 44-40. to 40. Third period here. Mikhail Rath going inside to Brooks. Brooks gets a tip. Here comes Parker on the push. Valley has numbers, but she'll reset. She'll wait. There's Tarrant. Over to Beals. Beals inside. Spin move. She's whistling for the traveling violation. And it's not just the point guard, too, Ibra. I like Chrissy Parker as well. She came back into the game, as we've seen earlier. She was injured a few minutes ago. Came into the game. You have three players in double figures with Parker, Bills. So, it's actually two players in, in double figures, actually, with them, with Bills and, and Parker. So, I like Parker as well going in this matchup. And it's interesting to see how the Lady Tigers can play in that zone defense of the Lady Double X. I like Parker's haircut. I like her hairstyle. It's very, it is very nice, I like actually. That. I like that. Kennison inside the paint. She'll reset. Just about 20 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Tigers lead it by four, 44 to 40. And another miscommunication error by the Lady Tigers as Kennison couldn't connect with China Ewing. We've been seeing that all game long, the turnovers. The first five minutes we've seen from the Tigers has just disappeared. We, it's like we haven't seen the Tigers ever since. They got some foul trouble, turnovers, a lot of things is going on. And the same problems they had against the Golden Lions is happening right now against the Lady Devil Itz. The Devil Itz went three deep. That was Nyla Smith coming in and now coming out. Here's Parker. Ten seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Parker looks inside to Haley. Haley takes the shot. Haley takes the bucket. And 44 to 42. Two, one. And that'll do it here in the third quarter for the Lady Tigers. They take the lead, though, going into the fourth quarter, and they lead it by two, Akil. Ten minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. We'll be right back. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. It's not selfish, it's not boastful, it's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together.
This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes an invitation, making this not only 12 ounces of refreshment, but also 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Think. And the sounds of the ocean of soul. This band in HBCU. Hanging out inside the H and PE arena tonight as the Lady Tigers continue and maintain the lead 44 to 42. Fourth quarter. All or nothing as Joyce Kenderson lets it fly. Tom. Buckets. Tom. Buckets. 47 to 42. And the Lady Tigers lead it by five now. Going inside to Beals. Parker. Somebody got crossed up there. Ebron lets it fly. China Ewing gets it to Kennison. Kennison passes up on the shot. Tigers lead it by five. There's Mikhail Raff. And another offensive foul for the Lady Tigers. Another offensive foul for the Lady Tigers. That's again another charge. Another charge, and that's three on Macro. She has to. She, I like her being aggressive, Nick, but at times she has to control herself. Cause she been, she been doing that since last year too. Coming into the season, she calmed down a little bit, but at times she still bring that freshman aggressiveness that she had last year to this season. 47-42. It's getting good here inside for H and PE. Cross court pass. Bills inside the paint turnaround jumper is no good. And a rebound there by Kenya Arnold. As Kenya Arnold puts it back inside the bucket. And the Tigers, the lead is cut to three. Mikhail Rath up top to Kenderson. And no! It was halfway in and it just rolled right back out of Kiel. Rims didn't show no good look on that one. No good look on that one. Now, Bills went across, across the timeline, across the court, got the easy layup. Ashley Bills putting it back in for two. Devilettes now have three players inside or scoring inside double digits tonight for them. Lady Tigers lead it by one, and it's going to be a kick ball. Number 11, Stormy Vaughn off her toes. Fourth quarter here, Keel and the Lady Tigers going for their 10th win in swag play. Who are we looking at down the stretch? Well, we're looking at down the stretch. We're looking at Joyce Kennison. She has to take control now, 19 points. Nobody else is putting, nobody else is being aggressive. Now, hey, somebody has to do the scoring. Now, speaking of aggressive, now Kaylin Palmer's getting back into the game. I want to see her get into it more and give Joyce the help so they can go on with the victory. Lady Tigers lead it by three now. Kaylin Palmer. Gets back into the scoring column. She has five points. She hit a three early on in the first quarter. It's been cold ever since. Here's Ebron. And a loose ball. And the Tigers have it. Kennerson looks up to Palmer. Palmer! No! Oh. Tiger fans not happy here inside the H and P. Mikhail Rapp playing some great defense here. And a quick foul on Kenya Arnold as Palmer came away with it. She turned around and Arnold was right there to stop her. So Kenya Arnold now has two fouls. Mississippi Valley not out of it yet, Akil. 
ever since after they cut that 14 point lead early in that first quarter from the second quarter on it's been back and forth valley lady tigers at one moment lady tigers had momentum then devilettes then it been back to the tigers then the devilettes now it's even in this fourth quarter right now six minutes left momentum is zero it's right down the middle nobody has strong momentum right now on either side of the ball nicole smith whistled for a traveling violation it's she tries to cut to the lane a little bit earlier than expected. We've got a good one here. The last one was a good one as well. Two teams matched up kind of evenly. I think the matchup is the key here. Matchup is the key, and you still got to look at the, the absence of Artavia Ford. You got to question yourself now. Ask yourself this question. If Artavia Ford was playing, what would be the outcome? And which I'll tell you before we would have got. You know, so that's up in the question why probably TSU is only up three. But hey, that's not an excuse. They had a 14 point lead earned the corner. They blew it. So they have to keep playing. Mikhail Raff can't hit a 15 footer. Devilettes come away with the rebound. Ebron gets it inside. There's Tarrant. Tarrant with the floater. Rebound, Palmer. Tigers have it on the loose ball. Here's Palmer. She'll have to reset. She looks for Kennerson. Tigers need to run some offense here, and they're going to do so. Coach Perry likes what she sees. China Ewan passes up the three-point shot. There it is. Ewan, no good. Here's Ewing. She has Kenderson. And Ebron comes away with it, but she steps out of bounds. She had Kenderson right there. I don't think she saw it. You have to look up. You was taught when you was a kid to look up. You, on that fast break, <laughs> I understand everything's going fast, but you have to look up. That would have been an easy two points if she dished it off to Joyce Kenderson for the easy layup. Would have been nice to make one of those no-look passes right there. No exactly, looks. it was right there to take it. Make a nice little highlight reel. Shemaya Brooks comes back into the contest. She's playing with three fouls. Media timeout coming up real soon. Kenderson takes it over to Palmer. Back to Kenderson. They're going to run the play. Halfway through here in the fourth quarter. Here's Ewing. Ewing passes it up again. Mikhail Rav. Count it. There you go. Mikhail Rav getting strong in the paint. Ewing didn't like the shot she saw. She gave it right to Mikhail Rath again. Here's Nyla Smith in the tear. And Taryn off the glass. Taryn keeping her team into the contest. 48 to 51, and this game is still close. Tigers coming off a loss Saturday night against the Lions of Pine Bluff. Trying to step back into the win column tonight, and Joyce Kenderson loses the basketball. Media time out on the floor. We'll be right back. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball on the TSU Sports Network. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debug something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. Find the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful. 
It's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, we must learn to work together. This is where crisp, smooth, refreshing Bud Light happens. But it is right here that it becomes... Akio, one season. thing I like about coming to the we TSU games, we have a DJ inside. He's on a consistent level. You know, there's been at times where we have a G DJ just for prayer view, then we'll black off for the rest of the season. There's only prayer view, prayer view. Now, we have a DJ each and every home game. And it adds to the game atmosphere. It adds to the flair. It just brings the crowd to life, you know, having a DJ. Christy it's very Park. important. Christy Parker takes a shot and an air ball. And steal 51-48. Yeah, we used to always go out to Prairie View, and they always have the DJ on the stage. They have a football game too. Here. Yeah, football games too. That's right. Joyce Kenderson takes it. And Palmer has it now. Inside to Brooks. Brooks, no, gets her own rebound. And she's fouled. Let's take it on down to Marcus Smith on the sidelines. Hey, guys, for the last four minutes, Coach Janetta Hayes Perry wanted nothing but this, to crash and continue to penetrate. They're closing again with that zone. She wants them to be patient, open up, find a good shot. As you saw, Shamaya Brooks do the same just as she did right there. But defensively, like she said last time, possession by possession, just finish the game soundly. It's theirs to win. They just have to continue to buy in. Back to you guys. Shamaya Brooks hits the first free throw, and buy-in is the key. You know, when you talk about recruiting, you have to recruit 12 girls, Akil, that you don't even know. You know, you've got to get to jail together, and the other girls usually don't know each other. There may be some teammates coming from high school, but, you know, you've got to get everybody to buy in the system all around aspects of this ball club. And that's the key thing with the Lady Tigers team. Everybody's young. With the exception of Shamal Brooks, she's a senior, but this is her first year under the system. You know, so you got to deal with a lot of players that sophomores and that red shirt last year that didn't play. Now, and honestly, this is their first year playing together. Look at the past team last season for TSU, for the Lady Tigers. They grew up together almost. They was on the team for four years straight. Vines, Cheadle, Brianna Sidney, girls like that, Jasmine Parker. They was on the team for three, four years together. This is their first year playing together. You have Kennison and McElrath and Puinga, but everybody else, they're trying to fit in and buy in to the Coach Hayes Perry system. Lady Tigers still lead by three. As we see, Brooks loses the basketball. Here's McElrath. McElrath with the fall back. No good. Christy Parker can possibly tie this game right here on this possession. Just about two minutes left to go here in the fourth quarter. Oh, my goodness. It's Haley to the free throw in the paint. And she almost got that finger roll in there. Timeout on the floor as Coach Hayes Perry is going to talk about it with her team. We'll keep it right here. We'll talk about it ourselves, Akil. Two minutes left to go here, and the Devilettes are threatening, although down three points. you seen just now when they got the rebound from McElroy, Joyce was trying to get the ball from McElroy, but you've seen the double team come from Park and Ebron. You're going to see the last two minutes. They know, team's starting to know now that the Lady Tigers and Joyce are really, you're not going to have a lot of production outside of Joyce on the scoring load. That's what other teams are thinking is game plan against Lady Tigers. They know that the Lady Tigers have Joyce. And without Joyce, and if the ball's not in her hand, it's going to be very hard for the Lady Tigers to, to control the game and score. So you're going to see the last two minutes. Don't be surprised if you see hardcore pressure on Joyce Kennison these last two minutes of the game. On the other side of the basketball, the Lady Tigers playing down the stretch. Two minutes left to go, and they're trying to get their 10th victory in swag plays. Joyce Kennison handles it here on the sidelines or across the base, across the timeline here. 
They'll start their offense. Here's Mikhail Rapp. And a three-second violation against the Tigers. And it's Shemaya Brooks. Tigers lead it by three. And here come the Devilettes. There's Haley. Beals needs to take over, and she does, but she can't put it inside the bucket. Lady Tigers come away with the rebound here. 53 to 50, Akil. Lady Tigers trying to bounce back from a loss Saturday night against the Golden Lions of Pine Bluff. Here's Palmer. Looks for Ewing. Kenderson needs to do something with it. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. Mikhail Rapp. And ball is loose. Here comes Palmer. Palmer with the step back jump. No. Yes, Brooks, no. And the Tigers just can't put it inside the bucket there. Here's Palmer. Christy Parker. Bucket. 53 to 52. And the Devil Let's call a timeout here. It's going to be a full timeout. We'll take it with them. 53 to 52. Lady Tigers lead by one. We'll be right back. You're watching Lady Tiger Basketball on the TSU Sports Network. Welcome back to Lady Tiger Basketball here on the TSU Sports Network. Nick Strong alongside Akeel Williams, the junior student here at Texas Southern, and Marcus D. Smith all the way from Sacktown, California. Sometimes they claim the Bay Area. Sacramento. How are you from Sacramento and not a Kings fan? <laughs> this man is not a Kings fan. He's from Sacramento. Uh-oh. Are you kidding me? That don't make sense. They have no blood of Kings in his, in his system. China Ewing to get the inbound, and the Lady Tigers lead it with 40 seconds left to go here. Joyce Kennerson, Lady Tigers lead it by one. Lady Tigers were up as many as 14 in the first quarter. Devilettes fought all the way back. Here comes China Ewing to Mikhail Raff. Mikhail Raff guarded by Ebron. Kennerson, buckets, count it. The Lady Tigers extend the lead to four. Christy Parker coming right back with it as Beals goes up strong. And she'll go to the free throw line to shoot too. Akil Joyce Kenderson was your player to watch down a stretch, and she showed why she's the go-to player in crunch time. Ice water in the veins. That was clutch. Big bucket. Joyce Kenderson is not afraid of the moment. She's been in the moment too many times last year. Cheese was in the moment again. That was a big bucket. They can hold on to this win. This will be a very, very big win for these Lady Tigers. Ashley Beal to the free throw line, the SWAC player of the week. Missed the first free throw. Misses the second. Loose ball. And the Devilettes come away with it. And going up for the shot was Kenya Haley, and she's fouled. Kenya Haley to the free throw line to now shoot two. Devilettes missed two straight free throws. And Kenya Haley stops that streak as she cuts the lead down to three. 
player of the game considerations. I wonder who. As we hear from Coach Hayes Perry right after the contest, then we'll have a player of the game as well. Timeout taken by Coach Hayes Perry, Akil. Great job there by Kenya Haley to hit those two free throws for the Devilettes to cut the lead down to two. Tigers are going to get it here on the offensive side of the basketball, and they're probably going to get fouled here. Going to get fouled. 12 ounces of inspiration. To be more up for whatever than ever. Bud Light. The perfect beer for reading and unleashing a whole world of whatever in the name of a ridiculously good time. If you're up for whatever, look for your message on Bud Light Bottles. Bud Light, the perfect beer for whatever happens. Think. Question. Cut. Compare. Learn something new. Debunk something old. Hit a wall. And think again. Model. Plan. Spin. Discard. Now breathe. And keep going. Work till it's late. Then early. Then late again. Smile. Laugh. Rest. Regroup. Use technology. Use your hands. Use everything you've got. That's what it takes. China Ewing to inbound. Ewing gets it into Kennerson, and there it is. You talked about it. There's the foul. So they're going to send Joyce Kennerson to the free throw line. And at that point, you had no other choice but to foul. You don't want to take off too much time off that clock. And now, a couple more fouls, and they're getting the bonus. Actually, I take that back. They're not in the bonus yet. So China Ewing is going to get Joyce Kennerson in the backcourt. And Christy Parker right there. And Christy Parker is not happy about it. As Kenderson had it in the backcourt. And Christy Parker thought she got all ball. They may have to go back and take a look and review this. Now look. That was that was that was a key. That was a big call. Very, very questionable call. For the Lady Devilettes. And Kenderson is swiped from behind. And that's actually number three on Parker now. It's been interesting in these last 15 seconds. <laughs> if you're a Devilette, I see why you could be mad at that last foul call they caught on, on Parker. It looked like from our angle it was a steal. That could have been the better pass. It was just too much pressure on the Devilettes. And if you're a devil -led fan watching this game, I, I see why you're mad. Because that was a very questionable call from the referees. Joyce Kenderson hits the first of two. 57 to 54. Yeah, Parker was all alone in the in the backcourt had she, you know, got that steal and tied tied could have tied the ball game. Here's the second free throw. Count it. 58-54. The Devilettes are gonna have to do a little magic here. Here's Ebron. Kenderson guarding her tough. Shot is up by Haley. Haley off the glass, no good. And Miguel Raff gets the rebound. And the Tigers, the Tigers. And before the Tigers get the victory, Palmer is going to get fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Every one second love, like the Lady Tigers will come over. They want to escape with this win at home. Very big win for the Lady Tigers. Christy Parker still not happy with the referees as she's jawjacking with the refs. Shot is up by Palmer. Count the bucket. 59 to 54. Lady Tigers will advance to 10 and 4 in SWAC play as Palmer hits the second. And the Devil Let's Akil will fall to 6 and nine 60 to 54 your score and the lady tigers look good doing it in the last two minutes they look good and you got like the player george henderson once again he comes into play 24 points and biggest player of them all play of the game was that three-pointer that couldn't lead to four On the Devilette side of things, not a bad game from them. They just didn't come out on top. You talked about it, head coach Jessica Kern has nothing to hold her head down about. They split with the Tigers this season, and they may have to match up again in the playoffs. 
Had they seen in the first round in the quarterfinals at home, best lead, that would probably be the best game in the whole first round of that tournament because them, the two teams match up very, very well. And you're going to probably see our team report back in time for that possible potential third meet. And I would love to see that rubber match between the Lady Devils and the Lady Tigers. We didn't see Artavia for tonight. We saw Coach Perry going deep into the bench at the big man position, at the power forward position, and it showed a little bit early on as well. It showed you like the play that you've seen from Shamal Books once again. We talked about that game from Craigview leading on to now. She's been very good, very productive in this system, and you like the play of MacRef down the stretch. After the alma mater, we'll hear from head coach Janina Hayes Perry and Marcus Smith's player of the game. And we'll hear from head coach Janeta Hayes Perry. She just grabbed her 10th victory in SWAC play tonight. And she's going to actually sit down on that stool. And as she sits down, she's still taller than my man Marcus Smith. <laughs> <laughs> we got to bring it back when, when he come back to the table. Let's see what he's got over there on the sideline with head coach Janeta Hayes Perry. All right, Coach Janetta Hayes Perry, Coach, after a slim halftime you lead, the Lady Tigers held on. How do they keep their resilience out there? I think the Lakes had a lot of fight today. They did a really good job staying in the game, staying focused. Um, playing with our Artavia Ford tonight is definitely tough because I have post players who have to step up that aren't used to playing those minutes. But I'm glad that they finished the game, and, and that was big for us. Talking about finishing the game, talk about the play of your point guard, Joyce Kenneth, said 24 points tonight. Game in and game out, she seems like always to be the hero for the Lady Tigers. Um, Joyce is young. She's still learning the game, but I think she does a good job of um, keeping those poised and staying in it the whole time. Joyce should be a um, player of the year candidate for sure. Um, and if she keep working, her future is really, really bright. And two more questions, Coach. With, that, with just about, I want to say maybe 16 seconds left, talk about that near steal. What was going through your mind before the ref blew the whistle? No! <laughs> but, um, again, that's, that's what being young is understanding possessions. It shouldn't have came to that. Um, who was it? On a free throw down there, I want to say Shamaya got an offensive rebound and tried to throw it back up. On the possession, we're up. It's 26 seconds left in the game. So we stretch this game out. We come down and stretch down here, and we give up an offensive rebound to put back with foul twice in a matter of 26 seconds. So it's a lot of things we need to go back IQ-wise to make sure we fix before the next game. Well, look, we have the full week to do that and going against a tough road game against ASU. Thoughts on that real quick? I'm excited. Um, I think we match up well with Alabama State, and we're looking forward to seeing them again. I mean, I think we're one game behind. We're one game behind Alabama State and Graham, depending on what they did tonight. So it's going to come to the finish, and I think if we finish strong, we'll finish in the top, and that's what we want. Well, of course we want to win a conference championship, but we want to finish in the top so to give us a good season for the tournament. Congratulations, Coach, on the win. Let's have a good week and get right back at it on Saturday. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, a kill. Back to you guys. 
Lady Tigers pull it down to victory. A Keogh head coach, Janetta Hayes Perry, giving it all she got out there on the court tonight, and the Lady Tigers look good while doing it. Had a 14 point lead early to start the game, 14 0. Gotta give credit to the Lady Devils. They fought hard, they played hard. And like I said, if you're a Lady Devils fan, I can see why you're upset in the final seconds of that game. But Lady Tigers put off with the win. Great shot from the player of the year in my book, Joyce Kennison, sophomore sensation. Doing it again for the Lady Tigers. Lady Tigers go to Alabama next week on the Alabama swing, one of the hardest swings in the swag. Hard to play with. Hard to play against, hard to play in. It's hard to go down Alabama and win the game. So this is going to be a very interesting game with two of the top teams in Lady Swag Basketball. Marcus Smith is going to catch up with Joyce Kennerson over there on the sidelines if he can kind of get to her real quick. And she's going to make her way over there to get a couple of questions in. Joyce Kennerson did good tonight. Another game scoring in double-digit figures. And I think Joyce is taller than Marcus, too. <laughs> Let's see what we got on the sidelines. Go for it, Marcus. Rude and great player of the game, Joyce Kennison. Joyce, 24 points. Just talk about your performance tonight. Um, I started off sluggish. You know, I had to pick it up uh, a lot more because I seen on the scoreboard I had, I think, 10 points. So I was like, oh, no, that's not Joyce. You know, so I had to come out, set the tempo, get my teammates involved, and get the dub. Well, let's talk about the first possession the uh, at tip off, it seemed like everybody was confused on which way was which way to go. But you had the IQ, the, uh, the presence of mind to go the right way and get get us started early. Did that kind of set the tone a little bit yeah, for you guys. Uh, really, to be honest, I was confused too. So you know, they was like, "Drugs, that's our goal." So I'm like, "Okay." And um, no, honestly, I didn't set the tempo. Neither did my team till like we came back in during halftime. And coach was like, "Okay, it's time for us to pick it up." She started off with me because I'm the captain. So really, I have to set the tone for them in case, in order for them to pick it up. And final question, Joyce. It seems like that's always the story. You guys played good in the first quarter, then the second quarter, maybe then you guys turned around in the fourth quarter. Going into ASU next Saturday, what's it going to take for the team to play a good 40 minutes of basketball? Once again, we have to start out tough, you know, hit them hard in the face early so they can lay down. And it gives us time to relax during, I, I don't want to say relax, but you know, like, set the tempo a little bit low during fourth quarter, you know, since we up by like 30. So, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Joyce. Congratulations on the game tonight. 24 points for Joyce Kennison, guys. Akil, Nick. Back to you guys. My player of the game, Akil Joyce Kennerson, the Lady Tiger from Port Arthur, Texas. That'll do it tonight here for the Lady Tiger broadcast for our executive producer, Jeremy Tillis, and the athletics department for my sideline reporter, Marcus Smith, and my main man, my color commentator, Akil Williams. I'm Nick Strong. So long from the H&P Arena. Lady Tigers win. <laughs>